Andrea, Little Big Old Me. I have my own internet TV show, Little Big Old Me. As stated before, we're, we're a production company. Myself, in conjunction with my business partner, we have our own production company. We basically travel around the country. We interview people, ordinary people, celebrities. We also... Um, I, I, I'm quite an adventurous person. I love the outdoors. I love living life. And part of our show is about these um, moments. So, yeah, I love to have fun. I love to get out amongst it. And I guess, yeah, I, I guess I wanted to share this with the with people in Australia and around the globe, um, hoping that you might tune in and watch our program and, yeah, um, learn about things in life maybe that you haven't experienced or things that maybe you wanted to do but um, haven't got the motivation to do. You know, I'm 52 years old. Uh, I've always loved the outdoors, as I stated before. Um, I've travelled quite extensively. I love camping. I love boating. I just, I guess I love life. I love music, as a few of you may well be aware. Um, it's taken me some time to get to this point in my life. I've always um, loved, you know, being a performer, entertaining. I never really believed in myself. And I made a decision less than a year ago to start this production company and follow my dreams and um, and the decision, I guess, to be somebody in life. And, yeah, so this is what our show is about. I hope you can join us and I hope you enjoy the program. Have a great day. Have a great evening, wherever you may be. And you know what's funny? When I, I, when I had my third child, I didn't find out. And I wanted a boy, my father had just died. And um, all my girlfriends going, yes, your ass is fatty, you're definitely having a boy. Well, I turned around and had a girl, but yeah, but <laughs> it's a bit funny. I've, I've got to meet a Ron, because I love Ron. Later, Ron. My thong's blew out, damn it. It's un Australian not to wear double pluggers, isn't it? Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? This is Sandra, a little big old me. We're a production company. There's only two of us in our team, myself and Nigel. One of these days I might grow up. It doesn't really matter. I'm having fun and living life and living the dream. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I used to do this, do this with bourbon, but I've gotten a better cook over the years. Hey, this is me. This is part of who I am. If you've got a story, I don't care how ordinary you think it might be, if it's special to you, it more than likely would be special to me. Yeah, I guess, you know, if there's something you want to do in life, don't let life hold you back, don't hold yourself back, just get in amongst it and, and take life with both hands and, and, you know, and run with it. And this is what we're all about. Real stories, real people, celebrities, whoever, whatever. I have to go into hematology day ward for some treatment. Um, so yeah, this is who I am. Let's go. We're about to go in and see Isaac Butterfield. Um, when we got here yesterday, I was like a bit disappointed that our cabin wasn't facing the waterfront. You can't have it all. And then we pull up to our cabin and we're right opposite the pool. And you know, the little child in me was like, "Ooh, a water slide!" You know, I'm going to do that before we leave. Um, I'm an indigenous person of this country. One of the best road trips I've ever partaken in. Having a ball, I mean, look at the scenery, it's just amazing. I said, I've actually got nothing to say. I said, can you believe that? <laughs> Cocktails, you gotta love that. You're gonna go in that water, you need to grab one of them. Well, I went to grab it and almost had it in my clasp and my hand slipped and I dropped into the water. Hence the glove. Mm. Bend over, Nigel. <laughs> Hey, so like I said, we can't do this waterfall. I was thinking if there's no one there, I'm going in naked, but <laughs> 52 and a bit flabby and wobbly. <laughs> I've got my ass is still quite taut though, thank goodness. Maybe I should just walk down in my underwear 
and that'll prep me for my big moment. Anyways, maybe not, there's people coming. I'm in Wilga, my hometown, and this guy's walking along muttering to himself and going, fucking people, they never pick up their rubbish. And I went, you, I said, I'm right there with you, mate. Because it all ends up in the ocean, you know? We've got to protect our marine life, our environment, and the things that we love. Yep. My website will be little big old me. Nice, yes. nice. I mean, I'm little, but I have a big personality. And let's face it, I'm getting old, I'm 51. Um, as old as a man you feel, you'll say, but he's older, so that doesn't work for me. We've been travelling for three, nearly seven hours. Had a few diversions, life's full of diversions, as I would know. Little big old me! Sorry, people. That's part of our intro. <laughs> So hi, Ed. Hi, Sandra again. Um, so you just saw a bit of an intro trailer to our program. Nigel and I started our production company last year in November. It hasn't actually been easy, you know, with COVID. We've had a lot of restrictions. We've had a lot of travel restrictions, as has everybody else. But we've persevered through it and, you know, um, still tried to reach our goal and, and we finally sort of got there as you can tell so tonight is our first episode we streamed to YouTube live this morning uh, we're programmed to YouTube this morning we're going to stream our first episode to you guys shortly um, it's been a hell of a ride it's been fun you know I guess it's fair to say I haven't lived an orthodox life but you know I guess part of who I am will be revealed in this program and I'm finally proud to own myself and own my behaviour, I guess you could say. I don't always do things by the book, but, you know, the world doesn't work like that. You know, sometimes you've got to step outside your comfort zone and just live life. And, you know, you might cross some um, lines at times, but, you know, be yourself, be true to who you are and just live life and, and don't have any regrets. And I'm glad to say that, I'm, you know, I've gotten to the age of 52 and I finally am seeing that and being that person. So, yeah, I hope that you enjoy our program and I hope you tune in for another episode next week. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, like to err is human, I'm not perfect. So, also, you can catch us on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, we streamed our first episode to YouTube this morning. So, you can also watch us, catch us there. Uh, we'll feature an episode once a week and we'll also stream live to Twitch um, every week. So I hope you can join us. Have a great day. Good morning, this is Sandra. Hello to everybody out there. Nigel and I are just sitting down watching our stream to YouTube. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm packing a bit of luggage this morning. That's okay, we've been working hard. Uh, my show and myself, I'm, well, I'm about real life, so I just thought I'd share this moment, this special moment with everybody out there and um, yeah follow your dreams I have and hopefully things will work out and I'll find that pot of gold over the end of the rainbow God knows I need it I'm homeless <laughs> but I have I have people that support me um, in all honesty I gave up a home a few years ago it was a bit of a mansion um, I grew up in children's homes I made that decision so that my children would always have a home and somewhere a base so you know, I'll work my way through it, as I have done most of my life. I'm a survivor. I are the tiger. Have a great day. Bye. Good morning, how is everybody doing? This is Sandra, little big old me. And show is about my adventures, my love for the outdoors. We interview people and travel the country. Also, uh, you know, everyday people, celebrities, and basically just um, have a bit of fun and, and live life.
Sunday. How exciting. I'm going up in an ac- acrobatic plane. Talked to the pilot yesterday. Asked him, you know, prerequisites, you know, is there any instructions before I go up and fly? Now, I mentioned to him that maybe I'll just eat early in the morning in case I throw up over the pilot. <laughs> Um, and he said, no, you actually, quite surprisingly, said to me, you're better off to eat something before you go up, you know, because you'll get quite nauseated. He said, but we'll, you know, talk you through it. We'll do one loop, see how you feel. And, I mean, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I'll be like, Mark, do it again, do it again, you know. That's one of my um, lovers, I think. They can wait. <laughs> well, you know, I don't have many. You know, girls got to do what a girl's got to do. So with the flight, you know, as I said, contrary to what I thought, you know, he said, no, make sure you eat something. He said, even if it's wheat, bicks or porridge, something that'll stay, you know, which I eat anyway, you know. Um, unfortunately, I have a bowel condition. I won't go there too much in a specialist, but it's not a problem. Not, you know, I'm glad that I asked that question and always pays. Anyway, yeah, so back to the flight. So... Um, I can't wait. I was a bit scared, and I'll tell you all why. Um, one of my closest friends, Angie, musician, um, been friends for a very long time, had a dream a couple of months ago that I died mid-flight on the east coast of Australia. And and all my friends sort of had a bit of a laugh. I went, well, Sandra won't have the money. She won't be going up in a plane. Anyway, so they all had a laugh. when went, ha Sandra's not going on a plane. I won the money. Here I am going, and through the grapevine heard that I was going up. Originally, it was going to be a Black Ops helicopter, the same one from in the movie Black Hawk Down, but that's in Sydney. We'll get to that, at, you know, in the next couple of weeks. And the funny thing was, then my girlfriend had another dream, and that they were all sitting around going, such a shame, she was about to be famous, and she'd become successful, and now she's gone, and oh dear. And then another girlfriend of mine said, you need to tell her about that dream. You need to tell her, you know. So I got a phone call from my girlfriend the other week and she went, Sandra's is going to sound really weird, but blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. You know, and then I talked to my girlfriend that told her that you need to tell her and she's gone, just, just promise me this, Sandra. If you get there and you have a bad feeling, don't go up in that plane. And then we got a phone call saying that there was a technical problem with the plane, but it was with the camera and it's vital to our production to have the footage, you know. So, yeah, so... They were originally going to swap planes, but we've we've come up with a solution. So I'm going up in the plane that I originally set out to go and picked, you know. So, yeah, I was, I was a bit scared just because of that dream and whatever. It was a bit freaky, but, you know, I've come a long way. I've changed my life. I struggled with myself most of my life, and I made a decision to, to be somebody and go somewhere in life, you know. Um, so I'm going unless the pilots and the weather changes, I'm going up in that plane. And I'm more excited now. I'm not even really scared. I can't wait, actually. We've just, just jumped in the car, ready to leave, fueled up, about to crank some tunes, and it's about a two-hour trip from where I live, so not too far. About here to Sydney, I guess. I've never been to Byron Bay. I've been to many, many places, but I've never been there. My children have. So it's exciting. It's always exciting to go somewhere new. And what else? Then, as you all know, tomorrow will be the acrobatic flight. I'm really, really, really excited now. Hey, y'all, Dawn. So, Nigel and I have made it to Byron Bay. We're at the um, Byron Bay Arts Factory. I love it here. It's, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's um, artists and musos and, you know, all sorts of my creed here. <laughs> um, and I've got to have an early night, as you know, because I'm going up on my flight tomorrow. I'm excited. But all I want to do is sleep or have sex, but anyway, you get that. <laughs> it's a long way from um, my lovers. <laughs> it's the morning of my flight. I've got to kick it into gear and get my ass moving. I'm the only one going up the plane, so I guess it's not leaving without me. <laughs> got to love life at the moment. Just gave, gave a young'un from here at the Arts Factory a lift to work. It's a bit funny. He just says to me, do I look all right? He's, he's been on the trip, so he was carrying around two bottles of whiskey or something. I don't know, it was a bit funny. And we got talking, I ended up giving him a lift to work, which was great, in a way, and we had a bit of a chat. And then um, I said to him, you know, um, something that someone said to me or a metaphor that I like is always look the world straight in the eye. I posted it a while back, shoulders back, head up high, 
and have no regrets and tell yourself you can do it and you'll get through. And I said, some days you think your worst days are going to be worse than worse and they end up being the better days. So, yeah, just one foot in front of the other. I'm um, putting one foot in front of the other and, and put my foot up into a cockpit and, well, can't be all bad. So Nigel's just taken a photo of our, my plane, I should say. Just What's talking. his name? Phil. Phil! Phil! Hey, mate, are you Phil? Plane, spent 30 years in the Air Force. Right. And so it's full, it, they only stopped using them about uh, two years ago, right. just before COVID. Um, I can tell you something funny. I'm not nervous at all. That's all right. I'm a real outdoor and general and junkie. Um, my, one of my girlfriends is a singer like me as well, I'm a singer. Um, she had a dream a couple of months ago that um, I died in a flight, East Coast of Australia. Right, a bit funny. Didn't say anything. I won. I won. You don't know. I'm not scared, man. No, we're safe. Um, I believe you. Yeah, I'm so, confident, and I, I just want to share that with you. Well, there's so nothing that's funny. Nothing that we can't handle here. So I, I would imagine I'll, I'll feel safe. You can read, and you can read through that. If you They're like. not X-ray with vision ones. You can no, see no, they're just old. Anything, they're just no? old, old man <laughs> reading glasses. Are they? Oh, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I love is being outdoors. I'm an adrenaline junkie, I've got a thirst for life. And so we thought we would go up, I, you know, send me up in an acrobatic plane. I'm looking forward to it, I'm not scared at all. I can't wait to get in here, actually. I had to wait to get in here and I wanted to climb over the fence, but I've got to stop doing legal things, I guess. <laughs> Public profile and all. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, if there's something you want to do in life, don't let life hold you back, don't hold yourself back. Just get in amongst it and, and take life with both hands and, and, you know, and run with it. And this is what we're all about. Real stories, real people, celebrities, whoever, whatever. If you've got a story, I don't care how ordinary you think it might be, if it's special to you, it more than likely will be special to me. Um, I'm an indigenous person of this country and also my ancestors were from Vanuatu, Kanaks. So some might say two stolen generations, but um, I'm part of this earth like we all are, part of, you know, who I am. You, you'll be able to see that in, in our, play, our videos, the places we go and the things we do. So, you know, do yourself a favour, tune in for one episode, you'll be hooked. Okay, so just hop up here and just down the black. Yep. Yep. And just hop in here. Yep. Oh, I'm sitting next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even better. I thought I'd be in the back. No, no. Oh, that's, that's... I used to work at the show. I was a carny, so <laughs> anything goes here. Okay. I'm just going to close the country down. Okay. All right, then? Yep. Let's start this go frame.
that's why I, I sort of backed off of yeah, no. But you do get used to it, so don't take that as a, uh, it's, it's doing aerobatics, is something that changes up with you, so you get used to it. So. I loved it, I loved the rolls, I loved the barrel rolls, whatever. We did some loops, we did some loops. rolls, we did Cuban 8, yeah. we did some, a score turn. Yeah, okay. Um, then we went down and buzzed Byron Lighthouse. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, to anybody that's thinking of doing something like this, do it. Got a bit better of me at the end, but I'd still do it again. And, um, it does take up on people. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've got quite a strong stomach, I've been through a lot in my life and I held on to it for a while and then sweat started coming down my forehead and I'm like thinking yeah and I, I tried not to burp and then <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> no, well it's it's um you went to, I put you through your paces so Yeah thank you. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful opportunity. Right. So um, we're at Classic Aero Adventure Flights, anybody that's um in Ballina region and has ever thought about doing it, do it, don't think about it, just make it happen. So thanks for watching. Excellent. Alright, thank you. Well, I don't think there's one on me. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and he said, no, you actually, quite surprisingly, said to me, you're better off to eat something before you go up, you know, because you'll get quite nauseated. He said, but we'll, you know, talk you through it. We'll do one loop, see how you feel. And, I mean, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I'll be like, oh, do it again, do it again, you know. That's one of my um, lovers, I think. They can wait. <laughs> well, you know, I don't have many. You know, girls got to do what a girl's got to do. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm distracted now. I'm thinking about other things. Better focus. <laughs> it's been a challenge for me sometimes, but I'm getting there. You know, I'm, I'm really, really am getting there. And we're making, we're, we've come a long way in such a short way, and I'm very proud of myself. Yeah, so back to what I was saying. So we're, um, so with the flight, you know, as I said, contrary to what I thought, you know, he said, no, make sure you eat something. He said, even if it's wheat bix or porridge, something that'll stay, you know, which I eat anyway, you know. Um, unfortunately, I have a bowel condition. I won't go there too much in a specialist, but it's not a problem. Not, you know, I'm glad that I asked that question and always pays. Anyway, yeah, so back to the flight. So um, I can't wait. I was a bit scared and I'll tell you all why um, one of my closest friends Angie musician um, been friends for a very long time had a dream a couple of months ago that I died mid-flight uh, on the east coast of Australia and and all my friends sort of had a bit of a laugh and went well Sandra won't have the money she won't be going up in a plane anyway so they all had a laugh went haha Sandra's not going on a plane I won the money here I am going, and through the grapevine heard that I was going up. Originally, it was going to be a Black Ops helicopter, the same one from in the movie Black Hawk Down, but that's in Sydney. We'll get to that, at, you know, in the next couple of weeks. And the funny thing was, then my girlfriend had another dream, and that they were all sitting around going, such a shame, she was about to be famous, and she'd become successful, and now she's gone, and oh dear. And then another girlfriend of mine said, you need to tell her about that dream. You need to tell her, you know. So I got a phone call from my girlfriend the other week and she went, Sandra's is going to sound really weird, but blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. You know, and then I talked to my girlfriend that told her that you need to tell her and she's gone, just, just promise me this, Sandra. If you get there and you have a bad feeling, don't go up in that plane. And then we got a phone call saying that there was a technical problem with the plane, but it was with the camera and it's vital to our production to have the footage, you know. So, yeah, so... They were originally going to swap planes, but we've we've come up with a solution. So I'm going up in the plane that I originally set out to go and picked, you know. So, yeah, I was, I was a bit scared just because of that dream and whatever. It was a bit freaky, but, you know, I've come a long way. I've changed my life. I struggled with myself most of my life, and I made a decision to, to be somebody and go somewhere in life, you know. Um, so I'm going unless the pilots and the weather changes, I'm going up in that plane. And I'm more excited now. I'm not even really scared. I can't wait, actually. We've just, just jumped in the car, ready to leave, fueled up, about to crank some tunes, and it's about a two-hour trip from where I live, so not too far, about here to Sydney, I guess. I've never been to Byron Bay. I've been to many, many places, but I've never been there. My children have. So it's exciting. It's always exciting to go somewhere new. And what else? Then, as you all know, tomorrow will be the acrobatic flight. I'm really, really, really excited now. Hey, y'all doing? So, Nigel and I have made it to Byron Bay. We're at the um, Byron Bay Arts Factory. I love it here. It's, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's um, artists and museos and, you know, all sorts of my creed here. <laughs> um, and I've got to have an early night, as you know, because I'm going up on my flight tomorrow. I'm excited. But all I want to do is sleep or have sex, but anyway, you yeah, that. <laughs> it's a long way from um, my lovers. <laughs> it's the morning of my flight. I've got to kick it into gear and get my ass moving. I'm the only one going up the plane, so I guess it's not leaving without me. <laughs> got to love life at the moment. Just gave, gave a young'un from here at the Arts Factory a lift to work. It's a bit funny. He just says to me, do I look all right? He's, he's been on the trip. She so was carrying me on two bottles of whiskey or something. I don't know, it was a bit funny. And we got talking. I ended up giving him a lift to work, which was great, in a way. And we had a bit of a chat. And then, um, I said to him, you know, um, something that someone said to me or a metaphor that I like is always look the world straight in the eye. I posted it a while back. Shoulders back, 
head up high and have no regrets and tell yourself you can do it and you'll get through. And I said, some days you think your worst days are going to be worse than worse and they end up being the better days. So, yeah, just one foot in front of the other. I'm putting one foot in front of the other and, and I've put my foot up into a cockpit and, well, can't be all bad. I'm Sandra. I have a production company with a, a, a business partner. Little Big Old Me, we're called. My business partner's Nigel. We've had a fair bit of experience in life. Um, yeah, well, I don't even know where to start with that. I'm a, a, an adrenaline junkie, an adventure seeker. I love the outdoors. I'm Indigenous, I'm a singer. I'm um, many things all rolled into one, I guess. We're about to, I'm about, I'm about to head up in a, I'd, I'd just describe it as like a red barren plane, you know, that's just what it looks like to me. Um, we're going to be doing loop-de-loop -loop and other things. And I'm really excited. I was a little bit scared, but I'm not really at the end of the day. Life's for a living and get out amongst it. The weather's perfect. Couldn't ask for a better day to do this. So, you know, if you like what you see today, stay tuned to our program because there's a hell of a lot more. Um, and you'll see I'm funny. I know I'm talented. I just didn't believe it for the longest time in a way, but I've, I've come a long way in a very short time and I'm proud of myself and I love life and, you know, we really do live in the lucky country. So have a great day. Don't forget to um, subscribe. YouTube, little big old me. Just thought I'd show you all my lapel. We've got a couple other rigs we're gonna set up once we get in the hangar. Um, and I'm hanging to get in the hangar, I can tell you. I'm not scared at all. I've, I can't wait. I'm like, oh, I even wanna jump the fence. Yeah. Um, funny, so Nigel's just taken a photo of our, my plane. Should say. Just talk What's his name? Phil. Phil! Hey, right, are you Phil? Flying, spent 30 years in the Air Force. Right. And so it's full, it, they only stopped using them about uh, two years ago, right. just before COVID. Um, I'm going to tell you something funny. I'm not nervous at all. That's all right. I'm a real you. outdoor and general and junkie. Um, my, one of my girlfriends is a singer like me as well, I'm a singer. Um, she had a dream a couple of months ago that um, I died in a flight, east coast of Australia, right, a bit funny, didn't say anything, I won, I won, you don't know, I'm not scared, I won um, $22,000 six weeks ago, okay. it was a fluke, it's helped our production company, it said we're, we're, our, our following is getting huge, you know, and we haven't even launched yet, and then all my girlfriends laughed and went, oh, well, Santa hasn't got the money to do that, don't worry, Ange. Then, then I won the money and then I put up a post going, I'm going up in a plane and, and I'm going in an air balloon tomorrow actually. And then they started freaking out anyway. But no. then she had another dream that they all went, oh, such a shame. She was now famous and successful. But I said, so, so the other girlfriend made a ring me and I went, I'm still going. You live life. You've got to get out and get yeah. amongst it, you know? No, we're safe. Um, I believe you. Yeah, I'm so, confident and I, I just want to share that with you. Well, there's so nothing, it's that's, funny. nothing that we can't handle here. So I, I would imagine I'll, I'll feel safe. You can read, and you can read through that if you they're like. They're not x-ray with vision ones. You can no, see no, they're, they're just, old, they're just no. old, old men <laughs> reading glasses. Are they? Oh, are you sure? <laughs> 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 One of the things that I love is being outdoors. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I've got a thirst for life. And so we thought we would go up, I, you know, send me up in an acrobatic plane. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not scared at all. I can't wait to get in here. Actually, I had to wait to get in here and I wanted to climb over the fence, but I've got to stop doing the legal things, I guess. <laughs> Public profile and all. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, if there's something you want to do in life, don't let life hold you back. Don't hold yourself back. Just get in amongst it and, and take life with both hands and, and, you know, and run with it. And this is what we're all about real stories, real people, celebrities, whoever, whatever. If you've got a story, I don't care how ordinary you think it might be, if it's special to you, it more than likely would be special to me. Um, I'm an indigenous person of this country and also my ancestors were from Vanuatu, Kanaks. So some might say two stolen generations, but um, I'm part of this earth like we all are, part of you know who I am. You, you'll be able to see that in, in our, play, our videos, the places we go and the things we do. So. You know, do yourself a favour, tune in for one episode, you'll be hooked. Okay, so just hop up here and just down the black. Yep. Yep. And just hop in here. Yep. Oh, I'm sitting next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even better. I thought I'd be in the back. No, no. Oh, that's good. You right? I used to work at the show. I was a carny, so <laughs> anything goes there. So I thought I'd just um, chat to everybody. 
I'm in the plane, number 37, actually funny, I'm, I'm, I'm the 27th, my birthday. Quite often since production started, we've, we travel a lot, we stay in a lot of accommodation and we keep getting the number 27 come up, but funny enough, it's 37, not 27. Um, funny, when um, I told you about the dream that my girlfriend had and then I was talking to my girlfriend I was staying with on, down the Central Coast, I've known her the longest out of all my friends, told them about the dream and, and all that. <laughs> and then my girlfriend's husband says to me, so how old are you again, Sandra? And I said, 52, he went, oh, so you're not like the 27 club times two. And I went, haha, very funny. He said, but um, can I have your royalties and the commissions off your royalties? I guess they believe in me, I believe in myself, and you know, this is why we're here. And I hope that I can send a message out to not only Australia, but the world. You know, you can turn everything around in a heartbeat if you only choose to and put one foot in front of the other. So I'm just going to take a moment to compose, wait for my pilot to come back and we're up and away. There's quite a lot of switches and buttons. I can see what you mean when I said, oh, you know, that they're probably easy, blah, blah, blah. I can see now. Oh. All these meters is quite complex, isn't it? It is. Mm. It's not real. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> once it's, it's no different to, I guess, you know, once you know how to drive a car. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. Or learn to play the guitar or whatever. Yeah, once yeah. You know it. Yeah. First time I ever drove four wheel drive on the beach, I nailed it the first time because I told myself I could do it. You know, and I went, it was last day camp, and I left before the kids' father, the boys stayed back fishing. Yeah. And um, they said, Mummy, you nailed that. I said, Make sure you tell your father. Like, it was a long walk back to where they were, so I, I didn't want to get bogged, you know, so I got, I got it done. Okay, so you get to put this on. Yep. Over the top here. Yep. You probably won't be able to hear anything just yet. That's okay. I'll just get me on the way. Do you rest your arm here? No. No. Okay. I could have taken that out. Mm, it's all right. I used to be a nurse. I'm a very caring person. So <laughs> this is more fun. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to hear me. Yeah, I can hear. Okay. I'm just going to close the canopy down. Okay. All right, then? Yep. Let's start this go for him.
it up on it. <laughs> I guess as you can tell, you know, the audio is not so clear, you know, we're about to hit 4G soon, so the camera's a bit jittery, there's nothing that we can do about that. Um, for anybody that's been in a plane or done something like this and experienced 4G, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. Some things have been here, so that's fine. I'm so glad that I have all of this, you know, it was an amazing experience I and mean, I never get tired of watching it, you know, it's, it's just the most amazing, beautiful thing. You know, if you tune into our other episodes, the very next day Nigel and I went up in a, a 
a balloon, balloon and loss they're called. Um, it was such, it was going from one extreme to the other one moment. I'm in a plane doing four Gs and flipping upside down. And the next day I go up in an air balloon and it was magical, but two total different extremities. Um, an amazing experience, you know. We went up on sunrise and as the balloon was sort of spinning 360 degree angle, we were facing the sunrise. It was ab absolutely magical feeling and I'd um, recommend it to anybody. You'll see that in our um, upcoming episodes if you tune in. So please don't forget to subscribe. Um, I hope that you'll um, join us. Funny, the pilot actually asked me where I lived, and at the time I lived near the beach in Wagulga, and then he actually specifically asked me where I lived. So I thought I probably should have hit him up for a date. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Gotta love a man in uniform. <laughs> All the times I was a nurse, I probably should have donned a sexy nurse's uniform, but hey, let's try to be a professional. I think to those that know me would be amazed that I'm sitting still for so long. <laughs> Not quite a regular occurrence or behaviour for myself, but anything's possible if you can set your mind to it. As you can see, the scenery is absolutely beautiful. You see it from a whole different perspective when you're up there, you know. It's one thing to take a photograph on land, as I said, I've done many times, thousands of times, but to be up there and to see it, just, you know, seeing it through different eyes.
so we had to actually wait until we got to four G's before we could start doing the manoeuvres, which is coming up shortly. It's a really weird feeling too because you're at any um shackled in sort of loosely, you've got to allow for a bit of free form. So it was a weird feeling to try and feel comfortable in that space. You sort of drop a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's reasons that you do it and I had to be my pilot. As I said before, he was an Air Force pilot for 30 years. Thing I'm not one to worry about in my hair looks. <laughs> so it was not long after this first manoeuvre that I started to feel unwell, but I knew I had to control it and, and get the most out of this experience. So yeah, was, um, just try and keep cool, calm and collected and I didn't want my pilot Phil to be aware that I wasn't feeling well, I didn't want him to back off on the manoeuvres, I wanted to get the full experience out of this moment. I love that shot there, I love yeah, the scenery, it's just amazing. <laughs> Better than a ride at the show. <laughs> a little bit more expensive but worth it all the same. <laughs> hey, you even had a time for a tune. <laughs> It's part of who I am. I denied myself of this for many years, but I, I will no longer. As one of my girlfriends said, good thing um, I only vomited once we hit the ground, it would have been funny doing that while we're mid-air and, and flipping upside down but you know he had his safety wearing glasses on so it would have been good. I'm sure it wouldn't have been the first time. Um, song comes to light when I look at this and that's the doors break on through to the other side. It's a pretty trippy experience.
said before, it's amazing what you can push through and get through. You know, you tell yourself you can. I was feeling quite unwell at this point. I think it was not long after that the sweat started rolling down my face and I'm like, oh, this is not good, but just, you know, compose yourself, you can get through it. And, and I did. It was only once I knew I was about to um, return to base and that we hit the tarmac that um, the air flowed. Not really a woohoo girl, but that moment seemed to call for it.
as I said before, it, you can't make out the audio. There's not much that we can do about this. quietened down so a good indicator that I wasn't feeling well.
so I'm back, nature calls, can't avoid that. <laughs> so from what I can tell we're about to come back and um, make our landing on the tarmac, we're well, not far off anyway. very quiet as I said before not feeling 100% but I wouldn't let that discourage anybody go and do it it was an amazing experience it really was and if you want to love scenery you can't get better than this experience in my personal view anyway I can see why my pilot Phil did this for a living his um, words sometimes can't describe this this moment this feeling So I actually I ate porridge for breakfast before my flight and then I didn't want to waste the milk because I had breakfast on the road on our way out. Had I not, and I didn't want to waste the milk as I said so I drank the rest of the milk. Had I not done that I might have gotten through it, it's hard to say. the bag there just in the nick of the time that much I do know <laughs> it's not always always easy to be a lady <laughs> crazy kind of lady but a lady all the same some might beg to differ but let them moments like this I sh wish I'd had breath mints but you get that No, one thing I was so relieved once uh, the cockpit was open to get a bit of fresh air and um, to compose myself. So coming up is a bit of a funny moment. Um, you probably can't hear the audio. But Phil was in a bit of a quandary as to um, unshackle me. I mean, I had to get rid of the camera, the harness, before we can unshackle the seatbelt. Meanwhile, I'm holding my bag of vomit. And I think he was a bit intimidated by my breasts, which is fine, understandable. He's sort of looking at me, not which, knowing which way to tackle it. So I gave him the camera, and then I said to him, well, he said, I need to unshackle it. And I said, well, it's up to you. I said, do you want to hold the vomit, or do you want to unclip the, the, the um, seatbelt? And he went, I'll unclip the seatbelt. So it was quite funny, in my eyes. I loved it. I loved the rolls. I loved the barrel rolls, whatever. We did some loops, we did some loops. rolls, we did Cuban 8, yeah. we did some, a small turn. Yeah, okay. Um, then we went down and buzzed Byron Lighthouse. Yeah, and yeah. 
I was trying to see the arch factory, but the camera's actually turned off at some point, but Phil said that it actually only just happened not long ago, so. But we've got the GoPro footage. Yeah. Hopefully the film works and that, but, um, yeah, to anybody that's thinking of doing something like this, do it. You've got a bit better of me at the end, but I'd still do it again. It does make up all good. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've got quite a strong stomach. I've been through a lot in my life and I held on to it for a while and then sweat started coming down my forehead and I'm like, then, yeah, I, I tried not to burp and then <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, um, you went, to, I put you through your paces, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> so, um, we're at Classic Aero Adventure Flights, anybody that's um, in the Ballin, Ballin region and has ever thought about doing it, do it, don't think about it, just make it happen. So, thanks for watching. Excellent. All right, thank you. Well, I don't think there's one more there. <laughs> <laughs>